Hello, SAUS scholars. It's Mr. Vanderpool here, and I'm going to be sending you weekly videos on how to improve at chess and just to get some chess time in while we are all remote learning. Um, let me start by saying I miss you all. And if you have any questions about anything, have your parents reach out to me and I will do my best to help. So this video is geared for second to fourth grade. In second grade, we started to touch on the idea of checkmate, um, which is how to win the game when we can no longer capture, protect, or run away from a check. Our king cannot capture, protect, or run away from a check. So this is good checkmate practice to improve your game. Third and fourth graders definitely know how to checkmate, um, especially those friends who um, were taking elective this year. So it's very important that we begin to talk about checkmate patterns which a lot of my club kids know how to do, but we can always improve at getting better at them and improving our game. So let's begin. So we have this wonderful position here that looks like a lot of pieces. It looks um, very difficult. It looks like, what am I supposed to do? I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Well, it's black to move. If you can see my three arrows here, these three dots indicates that it's black to move. If there's one dot, then that would indicate that it's white to move. So right now it's black to move and you should pause your videos for a few seconds and see if you can find a checkmate in eight moves. Okay, so if you pause your video, if you think you have the answer, go ahead and try and figure it out. Calculate those answers without touching the pieces. Um, but let's break it down. So let's start with this position first. In chess, you want to break down each and every position that you see. You want to turn bigger positions into smaller positions visually. This takes lots of training, lots of time, um, but eventually your chess pattern recognition um, begins to shine and you can find these examples very easily. So speaking of this first example, we're gonna talk about checkmating on the squares H2 and H1. And what I like to tell my more advanced scholars is you check the checks. So every move you wanna look for all the checks you can make in this position um, and then break them down step by step. So first, if we try this move queen h1, we have three checks here. We have one, we have two, and we have a sneaky one here with three. We can check the king this way. So let's check all three checks. If I go queen to a1, if we use the idea of capture, protect, and run away, what is the best move for white to defend this check? Yep, you got it, queen f1 and we safely protect, and this is gonna end up being a draw, a tied game. So let's go back. And now let's explore a second check. Let's look at the move queen h1. What do we think about this move? Right, I agree. The king could just capture the queen here, alrighty, and then you're gonna lose the game once I'm able to capture this pawn and make another queen and just checkmate your king. Okay, so that's not gonna work. So it's like almost a process of elimination, especially for those uh, scholars in higher grades who do multiple choice um, tests. You wanna eliminate the, those checks that just don't make sense, right? And queen h1 makes zero sense because right now there's no second check to follow this check. So that wouldn't be a good sacrifice of your queen. So let's look at our last check and we have queen h2. Now queen h2 is something we call a forcing move. This is a move where whether it's a capture or a protection, meaning a block or a running away type of move, it's forced and you can do nothing else. So right now, after the move queen h2, there's only one move that white can make here. And that means they are forced to move over to f1. And now let's break this down, especially for my second graders who just started working on checkmate and maybe need a little bit more clarification. Right now, this king on f1. Okay, let's make our bubbles. 
right here is the same square, the square he's on F1, as well as the square E1. The squares that are not safe right now, we have this red square F2. Try and think about what attacks this square F2 that the king is not safe on the square. And we also can't go to G1, right? I agree, we can't go to F2 because this pawn protects the square F2. It controls the square F2. My black pawn controls the square F2, so I'm not able to run away to the square, or it would be check. Um, G1 is not a safe square because if my king moves over the G1, my queen is controlling the square on G1, so the king cannot move there either. So right now, now that this king is forced to F1, I want you to find a way to turn these two green bubbles red, which means we have to be attacking these two squares. Remember, checks in control of squares can go through the king. Where can we move our queen on H2 to safely put this king in check? I agree with you. If you came up with the square queen h1, that is absolutely correct because now we send this attack and the queen controls the first rank. So now the queen controls every square on this first rank, but more importantly, it controls the square f2, e2, g2. My king cannot run away to g2. Yes, the pawn occupies the square G2. We discussed that the black pawn attacks F2. And we can't go to E2 because the queen currently occupies the square. And when I can't capture, protect, or run away, it is called, that's correct, it's called checkmate. Awesome. So let's try this rook application um, of our checkmate pattern now. So now I've added a black rook on h8 to make our position a little tougher, but it's not tough at all. If you remember what Mr. Vance Boo said in the beginning of the video, it was that you check the checks. So right now, pause your videos, and I want you to identify every square that this queen and rook can move to that would put the white king in check. Okay. So if you pause the videos and you came up with the square queen c1, you're correct. I put this king in danger. If you came up with the square rook h1, this also attacks the king. Another sneaky check here is queen to c5. Remember, queens can check diagonal. So let's talk about each check quickly. Queen c5 and I could run away to F1. And after my queen's on F1, can we check another check with our strong pieces? I agree, rook to H1 would then be a check B if my king moves over to G1. How about if I decide to block this check with queen f2? I think this also leads to a checkmate in one. Can anybody find it? I agree. Queen takes f2 as checkmate. Ask yourself, can my king safely capture this queen? Why or why not? I agree. This pawn on g3 protects the queen. It is the protector or the guardian and it is guarding this queen on f2, the helper piece. Awesome. So let's take a look at another check here. We have queen c1, but we addressed this before, queen f1 here, and I think we are OK. But there is a cool trick here with rook h1, if you continue to check your checks, and once the king takes, this will actually lead to another checkmate. But the pattern recognition that I want you to understand here today is our rook decoy sacrifice. So we're going to give up a rook. I know in second grade, we're talking about peace value. So I'm gonna give up five points right here for absolute zero.
But now with this move, it's very important that I check my checks. And if you check your checks, there are two really good checks that's going to lead to check me, and there's one really silly check that's not. I see three checks. Pause your videos and find these checks. Great, I agree. One check is queen h8, another check is queen c1, and another check is the sneaky move, queen h3. Now, queen h3, you tell me, do CPR, and I want you to tell me if this is check, you can do capture, protector, runaway, or check me. You cannot do capture, protector, runaway. I agree. This pawn moves in diagonally, captures diagonally, and can capture here on h3. But these other two checks definitely need to checkmate right away because this is a forcing move. Check. I could technically block with my queen to prolong the game. And my king can escape, so that won't lead to mate. But the definitive checkmate here is now queen to c1, queen blocks, and we can take this queen for checkmate. Remember, the pawn is guarding these two escape squares. If I go down to rook h1, king takes. Then again, we have a forcing checkmate after queen h8, king over to g1, and our pattern recognition shall let us know that queen h2 is the next forcing move, and checkmate here. Let's take a look at the knight check. So now this rook looks very familiar on h8, but now we've added a pawn, we've added a knight. So at this por portion of our tactical puzzle, we again must look for forcing moves, checks and captures. If you recognize the first two positions, my pawn was actually on this square g3. So right now we have to come up with a way to get this pawn on the square g3. Look for your checks, forcing moves. I agree, one, two, turn, and we put this king in danger. One, two, turn. Pawn, pawn does, the pawn does not have to capture, the king could move over, but right now, white only has two points to black's nine points. So white wants to earn some points back here. So he's gonna take, and black will recapture with what kind of move? I agree, your check. King's in danger, the king must move over. And now we have this good pattern recognition because the king cannot escape to F2 or even H2. So now let's talk about a knight fork. A knight fork is a basic tactical puzzle in which one piece picks up two pieces at the same time. One piece must move or defend itself, and then we can capture the other. So if you look for your forcing moves, your checks, you will find that knight g3 is a fork. I am attacking the queen, one, two, turn. Now I'm attacking the king, one, two, turn. And once this king moves away, I can gobble up this queen with another check right away. So lastly, let's put it all together and see now if you can solve this puzzle on your own. Think about what tactical puzzles you can notice right away, where we may want this beautiful pawn on h4, and what pieces we're going to need to bring in or sacrifice for that checkmating move. Take 10 more seconds. Awesome, great. If you found the forcing move to check, remember to check your checks first. I only see one check in this position and that's knight g3 attacking the king. Pawn captures g3. Again, I could move over the king g1, but this is a fork because I'm going to lose my queen. So it's in my best interest to take this knight and earn three points. Black captures back and look, we have our lovely beautiful square of the g3 and guarding this f2 square while this king is in danger. But now we're going to need this queen to get to this h1 square. So this is going to take some more checks. The only other check I see right now, even though it looks silly, is rook h1. 
And when the king captures, can we find another forcing check? I agree, rook h8. Then the king must move back to g1. Can we find another forcing check? I agree, rook h1. We're gonna give up both of our rooks for a checkmate. This is such a beautiful game. King takes h1, and we're gonna move over to queen h8 and give another and final corner check, king to g1. And now we don't wanna give up our nice, beautiful queen on h1, but we wanna protect it check, a check where another piece protects us and this pawn is defending our queen. That means the king is forced to move over to h1. And remember, he does not have these escape squares. The queen occupies e2, the pawn uh, occupies and guards f2. And now if you look for one more safe check, this is not a safe check, friends. One more safe check. Queen h1 will give you your checkmate. So when you see tough puzzles that has all of these pieces and moving parts, you want to break it down and try to focus and train your brain to start to learn checkmate patterns. We will be talking about more patterns in the coming weeks. So if this was a little tricky, it's OK. I'm curious if anyone can find one of these in their chess games and send it over to Mr. Nancy. Talk to you soon and remain safe. Bye.